Hello everybody, this is Vic from Vic's Creative Corner. Today we're going to talk about Elgato's 4K60 Pro MK.2, OBS 28, and PlayStation 5's recent update that allows you to pass through 120 hertz without using a VRR TV or monitor. So let's get started. First things first, we're going to talk about 4K capture utility. This is software directly from Elgato. It is to set up your capture card. And the first thing that we're going to do is hold down control and we're going to click on the cog wheel and we're going to pull up preferences. You want to go to the device tab because everything else you don't really need to worry about since you're only going to be using this particular function for OBS. So first things first, you want to make sure that your capture device is your capture card. You want to make sure that your color range is either set to limited or full or expand. In this case, it'll say shrink, expand, or bypass, same as input. I keep mine on expanded because I have everything expanded. My input EDID mode is display, so that way I do not have any screen tearing from console to capturing. And then EDID is going to be what you're setting up. You're always going to see it as default when you initially set it up, but if your monitor or TV is capable of 1440p, you're going to want to select 1440p. You can enable HDR tone mapping and use HDR tone mapping directly from the capture card if you prefer. Then you don't have to fidget with anything in OBS 28, but OBS 28 allows HDR tone mapping. So I'm leaving these unchecked from the capture card because I have the software doing it for me. All right, so I have my configuration set up. I don't need to save anything, but you want to select OK instead of cancel. The next thing that we're going to talk about before we get into the console, and we're going to just minimize that there, is some settings. So the first thing in OBS settings is going to advanced. You want to make sure that your priority for your process is going to be high if your GPU is capable of it. I run a 3080 Ti. Mine is more than capable of it. All righty. The next thing you're going to want to make sure is your color format is NV12. Your color space for high dynamic range is always going to be 709. I put my color range as full. You can change that or leave that to limited or default. Your SDR white levels are got to be around somewhere at 300 nits. And your HDR nominal peak levels are going to be 1000 nits. The reason why this is important is because we're doing HDR tone mapping directly from OBS 28. All right, we don't need to change anything else here except for going to output. You want to make sure in your output when you're streaming, you don't need to copy my bitrate, but you want to make sure that your rate control is CBR and at max 8000 if you're doing it on Twitch. Now, your keyframe interval should be two. And this is if you're under advanced. If you go to simple, you don't need to worry about any of this. It does it automatically for you. So for those who are having trouble with like pixelated streams because of your GPU, go to simple mode. Um, if you're wanting to do HDR tone mapping though, you're gonna wanna be under advanced. So you wanna do your preset max quality, your profile high, look ahead, psychovisual tuning. And for your max B frames, I have minus four. Under my recordings, like when I'm uploading to YouTube, I'm always going to downscale to 1080p. You can do it at 2K, you can do it at 4K, but I do mine to 1080p. 1080p is more than enough, and they upload pretty quickly for me. Um, I can do 4K, but do you know how long that takes to upload and then for it to actually process high-definition content in 4K on YouTube? It takes a while. So uh, we're just gonna stick with 1080p for quite a while. Until, you know, 4K is the new standard. Then that may change, but let's move on. Alrighty, so right here under your rate control, this is gonna be very important for your recordings when you're recording in HDR. Um, for me, I have mine to CQP because I got this directly from NVIDIA on how to set up for OBS. My CQ level is 15. My key frame interval is 2. My preset is max quality. My profile is, if I wasn't doing HDR, main. But because I am doing HDR tone mapping directly in OBS, it is main 10. 
My look ahead, my psycho visual tuning, and my max B frames are four. I do not need to do any enable replay buffers, so I leave that as is. Um, under your base canvas, it should always match whatever your computer's monitor's capable of on your base. In mine, it's going to be 2560 by 1440. And then my downscale is going to be 1080p. My downscale filter is Lancos. And then my common FPS is 60. So anytime you see me capturing something, whether I'm doing it in 120 or even with the PC game at max 165, you will always see it coming through as 60. But it is passing through those numbers for me. So with that, we're going to move on here. I don't need to save anything because mine is already saved. The next thing I'm going to talk about is my capture card properties. So with Elgato, as you can see, this is just saying 4K60 Pro MK.2. This is standard without any HDR. And we're going to actually pull this up here real quick. So I'm going to go to my settings because it looks pretty vibrant, right? And I think that's because it's picking up HDR right now. And HDR kind of oversaturates things unless you have it configured a certain way. So I'm going to turn off HDR. And when I do that, you're going to see here everything looks normal. You're going to see here everything now looks normal. So for capturing standard non-HDR content, you can leave your video format as any, your color space default, your color range, however you have it set up on your console. In my case, mine is full. All right. Now, the reason why you see custom is because mine is doing 1440p, and we're going to leave it at 1440p. My FPS is the highest FPS that it can capture. The color space is default. My video format is any. Now, this is very different when I'm running it in HDR. So I'm going to go ahead and select cancel on here. We're going to go ahead and go to our 4K capture utility. I could just switch to the screen and do it all from here, but it's all good. So I'm going to go to screen and video. I am now going to select HDR. I'm going to leave it always on for right now, just so you all can see what I'm talking about. And what I'm going to do is close out of 4K Capture Utility, because at this point, I don't need this open anymore. And if you see some weird little green stuff on the sides there, just give me a second. That'll get fixed. We're going to come back to the, the properties that I'm talking about here in just a minute. As you can see, it's it's adjusting. You just gotta give it a minute. Okay, so now we have HDR always on, right? Now, if I were to start a game, and you know what, I should probably put my second monitor in the actual HDMI input so I can see it on a bigger screen. Just give me a second here. So you're going to see that it's doing tone mapping, but how did I do that? All right, so now comes the uh, switching between my monitors. Give me just a second. I'm going to show you in OBS my settings that I have for my widgets that I, well, I call them widgets, but they're my sources that I have here in OBS 28. So this one is labeled as 4K60 Pro MK.2 HDR. I do not change anything in here because I've already set it up, but I am going to show you what I'm talking about when I say I'm toggling between screens here. I have my regular standard non-HDR version of my capture card on my stream deck for my source. My second one is HDR. I have my game set up from my PC, and then I have one set up for HDR from my PC. And then, of course, the display that you're currently seeing right now. So this is what I was talking about when I'm toggling between screens and inputs. Um, that's something that's being worked on right now, to be honest. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, talk about the configuration I have for HDR. So for HDR in 
OBS 28. I have my resolution type custom. I have my 1440p, and we're going to actually talk about that directly on the PlayStation 5 here in just a minute. So we're going to go to a bigger screen, and I'm going to toggle here in a minute. My FPS is to the highest FPS. My video format is actually P10. And the reason why is because this does the tone mapping for me. The color space is going to be Rec 2100 because this is for HDR. Um, this is just for me capturing HDR as well as live streaming HDR. Now, this is not going to be something to where it's for a YouTube video. This is in general for any recording, whether it's going to be Twitch, whether it's going to be live streaming, whether it's going to be a recorded content from my capture card. Um, I have it set up this way just for that specific reason, but everything is going to be output at 1080p for me. I don't need to worry about doing it 4K. If not, I have to go in there and change quite a few more settings. So this is just for the capture card video properties. Um, I have here my color range full and buffering disabled. I have buffering disabled on both of my sources, whether it's standard or HDR. Um, and hopefully this helps you configure your stuff. Now, if you see those little green buttons when you're here, uh, or those green lines that we were talking about, you just go back in, select any, then go back in, and you see those little bars are still there. Um, we would just keep doing that until it goes back and those bars disappear. Uh, I don't know why every now and then it gets a little glitchy, but that's okay. So the next thing is the console itself, right? So let me go ahead and switch these screens here. And what I'm doing is actually changing my HDMI input manually. And then I'm going to change my source right now to the HDR one. Now, a perfect example of showing off HDR is Ratchet & Clank's Rift Apart. As you can see, this is in HDR. And then I can show you a preview non-HDR. And then I'm going to show you how to configure 1440p at 120 hertz on your PlayStation 5 now that we've set up the settings to do the test. But first I want to show you the HDR. So what you're seeing real time is HDR. And you can see the vibrant colors with Ratchet and Clank, which is why I chose this game to show you the HDR features. All right, now that you've got a preview of the HDR, let's go ahead and switch to non HDR, right? So don't worry, I'm going to restart the game again, but just give me a second here because I am going to go to screen and video. You're going to notice that you're going to play around with this a lot. Now you can always set it to always on or automatic. Um, I'm going to turn it off now and we're going to switch to standard instead of HDR. So this is standard. As you can see, the colors, they're a little brighter. So you're not seeing HDR, but you are seeing what the capture card is passing through directly from the console without HDR. So this is just standard coloring. So as you can see, it's a, it's a little bit more vibrant. It's not in HDR. but you're able to see the difference between HDR and standard. And they're both just as beautiful. All right, so now that we've done that, we're gonna close out the game. And then we're gonna talk about settings. So I'm actually gonna come back and switch my stuff to HDR. So it looks a little washed out right now because I haven't changed it to HDR. And I'm going to do always on because most of the games that I play on my console are HDR. Most, not all. And then the next thing we're going to talk about is setting up 1440p. So the first thing you're wanting to do is test your output. Now it's going to ask you if you see a screen, we're going to select yes. Yes. 
We're going to select yes again. And we're going to keep doing this until it's done running its test. So if your gaming monitor or TV is capable of doing 1440p, 120 hertz, and is not a VRR monitor or TV, you can run this test and you can set up your console to at least do 2K 120 hertz, which is 1440p. All right, so mine, as you can see, is capable of doing it. And I can prove to you it's not VRR because you see VRR off, but if I were to try to turn it on to automatic, it tells me it's not supported. Um, again, this is just for the 4K60 Pro MK.2. But uh, in order to set up the 120 hertz for the handful of games that are supported on PlayStation 5 that run 120 hertz, you're going to select automatic. That is the only way to enable it. If you have auto low latency mode, which is ALLM, you can turn it on. Mine is not capable of doing it, and it will tell you the same thing. You cannot fool the console in thinking that you have those things that are not there. And uh, keep in mind, the 4K60 Pro MK.2 from Elgato does not have VRR. The only capture card supporting VRR at this current time is going to be the HD60X. Again, this video is just for the Elgato 4K60 Pro MK.2. And uh, I hope that this video has helped you set up running 1440p, HDR tone mapping in OBS 28. Thank you for watching.